Thank you for the great introduction. Let me start sharing my screen. I know we don't have much time, so. Have plenty of All right. It's fast paced. Uh, all right. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, and thanks Bob for the great presentation. I will also talk a bit about VV8 in my presentation too. Um, we will discuss uh, today how to build production ready AI applications. Uh, this is something that we notice. Uh, people start building their AI, their AI application, but then when they are into like 60 to 70% into the development process, they notice, wow, like, okay, it seems like it's ready, but how do I take it into production? So they, they there are a lot of questions coming to us uh, uh, around this. So I want to also like touch on that a bit in this presentation. But just briefly about me, uh, I work as a developer relations engineer at DeepSet. And DeepSet is the company behind the open source AI orchestration framework Haystack. And we will be talking a bit about Haystack in this presentation too. Uh, I, am uh, basic, uh, I am based in Istanbul, Turkey, and I am on social media. I use Twitter, LinkedIn, and I put my code on GitHub. So if you are on these platforms, feel free to give me a follow and let's connect there. So Haystack, uh, as I said, it's the open source LLM orchestration framework uh, by DeepSet. It provides the tools that Python developers need to build real world agentic AI systems. And when you think about the whole development process of an application, there are, we can maybe say like there are four stages, building, evaluating, deploying, and monitoring it. Uh, Haystack gives you solutions for each and every step of this process and helps you into your uh, AI application journey. Uh, Haystack takes its power from its building blocks, components, and pipelines. Components are the smaller unit. They only, like each of them has only one functionality, um, such as like creating embeddings, generating text, pre-processing your files, or sometimes it's just evaluating your retrieval by calculating the recall or context relevancy, faithfulness, so on and so forth. And by connecting pipelines to each other, you by connecting components to each other, you form pipelines. And pipelines in Haystack are directed graphs. Uh, and pipelines being graphs gives you a lot of flexibility. With this flexibility, you can control how your data flows through your application with branches and and loops. And this helps you, especially when you are designing an agentic pipeline for your application. And we talked about components, said that each only has one function, and this gives you a lot of modularity. So you can replace one component with another to try different methods or one generator with another to test out different LLMs or different model providers. And this modularity helps you when you're debugging your application in the development process, and as well when you take it into production when you're monitoring it. So you will be able to see each and each input to your component and uh, each of the outputs coming out from your component. Of course, um, Haystack comes with a lot of built-in components and integrations, uh, but if you think that there's a specific tool that you need uh, for your application, or maybe there's custom logic that you want to incorporate into your pipeline, you can easily create a custom component. Here, for example, you see them as uh, yellow, um, you can easily create a custom component and basically plug it into your pipeline uh, without any problems. So this is what a custom component looks like. It's basically a Python class where you uh, need to create with the component decorator that comes with Haystack. And then uh, you need to define a run method that is also defining the inputs to your component, to your maybe like node in your graph and the outputs of your node. Here, for example, for this node, for this component, we have two inputs and I see from the run method that both of these inputs are strings and it only has one output, but as I said, like it can have more than two inputs or multiple outputs. And here I also see that it's a string output. It's basically like every component is in Haystack is written that way. So if you want to read your own, uh, write, write your own, you can um, do it like this. So if you now step back and uh, see the Haystack ecosystem, uh, there are now more than 20 case stars on GitHub. That's not the best 
uh, indicator for a framework, but it's a very good one, I would say. Um, there are more than 160 components that comes within Haystack. So basically, there are a lot of functionality that supports your AI application journey uh, out of the box. And there are more than 70 integrations, uh, meaning each of these integrations are model providers, vector databases, uh, evaluation frameworks, monitoring tools, so on and so forth. And of course, Haystack has a great code base, a nice documentation. By the way, we get a lot of praises around our documentation. Um, but there are also more than this. Uh, there are tutorials and recipes uh, that helps you uh, when you are building your application from scratch. So if you are if you are new into this AI world, or if you want to do some advanced stuff, uh, there are a lot of good material out there that we give to you. So for example, um, if you want to create a rack pipeline in Haystack, which is one of the most common patterns that we see in our community and in our customers, this is uh, what a rack pipeline looks like. Uh, basically, you need four components for that, an embedder, retriever, prompt builder, and a generator. And basically, uh, this embedder component gets the user query, creates a query embedding by using either open source or like behind API models here, giving some of some examples of them. And then uh, Retriever gets that query embedding, sends it to your database to retrieve relevant information. And as a database of your choice, you can you can go with VV8, Quadrant, or other, other databases out there. The third component that you need is the prompt builder. Is a component, it's a, it's a component that renders your prompt. Basically, it gets uh, the relevant information from the retriever and gets the user query again and generates a full string prompt. Then generator component gets that prompt and sen sends it to an LLM and gets a response. And as a cho as a your choice of LLM, again, you are free to choose any model provider or any uh, model out there. Uh, you can host your own one. You can use uh, an API for that, basically your choice. And then the response coming from the LLM becomes the output of your pipeline. And this is the code of the exact same uh, RAG pipeline. Basically, all you need to do is to define your prompt. You, as you see, like we, we use the Jinja2 syntax for that. Then you add your components one by one to your pipeline, you connect them in the way you want. And as the last step, you just run your pipeline with the query. But that's not the only use case of Haystack. You can definitely extend the RAG and do web RAG, uh, meaning that you will retrieve information from web instead of your database. You can use Haystack to convert, pre-process, embed, and index your files. Here's an example of an indexing pipeline, for example. You can do advanced retrieval such as hybrid or hide, or you can create your agent, like tool calling agent or self-reflecting agent by using Haystack. For example, here's another architecture. In this one, basically you do a regular rag, but then you incorporate it with an agentic behavior. Uh, so your pipeline decides if the information retrieved uh, from the database is enough or not. And if it's not enough, it goes to web and puts that into your prompt as more context. If you want to go into the details of it, you can check our cookbook Wet and Hands Agentic Rack and see the full code of this. And another example is a tool calling agent. Uh, basically, this agent has the function calling feature and it has the ability to invoke tools. And as tools, you can use pipelines, other Haystack pipelines, components, external APIs, or MCP servers here. The, the good part are, uh, about Haystack agents uh, is that they are model agnostic. Basically, you can use any model out there. Uh, and here's an example of an agent. I'm not going to go into the details. You can check the cookbook, build a GitHub issue resolver agent to see the full code of this. And like those were uh, some example architecture, some example prototypes, maybe uh, uh, POCs that you could build with Haystack. 
once you are ready uh, with your application, with your prototype, uh, you can deploy it easily again uh, using hay Haystack. And for that, we have another tool called Hayhooks. Hayhooks is the tool to deploy and serve Haystack pipelines as REST APIs. Basically, it provides you a simple way to wrap your Haystack pipelines with custom logic and expose them via HTTP endpoints, including OpenAI compatible chat completion endpoints. And by using Haystack, you can also you can expose your Haystack pipelines as MCP servers if you want them to be used by other agents out there. And all you need to do is just like write a very simple wrapper uh, code around your Haystack pipeline for this. And um, as an alternative way of building your Haystack application, we also have DeepSet Studio. Is It's the development environment for Haystack. Uh, basically, in that platform, you can drag and drop and construct Haystack pipelines. And if you don't want to start from scratch, there are also ready-made pipelines that you can easily customize for your needs. You can bring your own files or connect to your database, for example, your VV8 instance, your VV8 cloud somewhere. Um, you can deploy the pipeline on Studio, give it a try on the Studio, or you can export the pipeline and deploy it somewhere else using Hayhooks, for example. And the good part around DeepSet Studio is it's free and open to everyone. Basically, you can sign up for DeepSet Studio and start using it right away. Let me go, yeah. So if all of these seem very interesting to you, and if you haven't tried Haystack, or maybe you know Haystack, but you didn't um, give, it, give it a chance yet, um, there is a new, um, challenge happening. Basically, it's called Spring into Haystack. We are going to launch it on Monday. Uh, we love all of these challenges um, that gives you uh, an opportunity to try Haystack to start slow, but like achieve something big in return. Um, so if you want to uh, build production ready AI applications with Haystack, you can go to haystack.deepset.ai and it's the one uh, that is under behind uh, that is behind this QR code. You can all you need to do is to pip install haystack-ai. And if you want to participate into Spring into Haystack, that is going to start on Monday. Visit uh, the website on Monday. You will see the details, and we will build an agent with Haystack and MCP together. I think that's like very exciting, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, see what people are building around MCP and Haystack.